What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Beneath the Beat Podcast. This is part two of our conversation with Caleb Elzinga. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy. One one really important thing is that, like that community, right? And I yeah. think that applies to musicians at any spectrum, you know, whether whether you're just like learning by yourself and you got a couple of friends that are also trying to learn. I mean, that's Ethan O'Brien, the one of the guitar players in Paddlebots, dude. Like I know he he's taken lessons and things like that, but him and Connor you know, them and their band having that community where they could vibe off each other and yeah. say like, oh, dude, I heard the Steve Eilick, like, check this out. You know, like things like that. It's so important. Well, Zach, then how how would you rate or not? It's not even a rating. How important was the community for you at Central? Like being surrounded by musicians trying to learn music. Yeah, I think that was for me, that was like my biggest takeaway from college, like more than more than even like, yeah, I learned a ton of music theory. I learned a ton about the trumpet in college because I studied trumpet performance. Like I learned a ton about that. But being able to like play with Andy and my friend Mike Hamilton and Haruki and, yeah. you know, like all those guys. And because at 11 o'clock. You know, none of the educators are there, but the people who are really playing and trying to get it are there and you can jam with those guys and yep. you know, vibe off that. It's, it was incredibly important. You know? Yeah. I mean, and now that, I mean, none of us are in school. I know for my, at least for myself, that's the thing that I miss the most, Me too. you know, cause that's what, that's what pushed all of us to actually want to be better to hang with, Oh man, did you hear them? They sounded so good tonight. Mm-hmm. I got to go practice and get, that good i want to be on their level yeah part of the reason i went to grad school was that one Mm -hmm. i had the opportunity um for the for an assistantship but the other was like i was i was getting complacent and i was getting Mm -hmm. bored not Mm -hmm. because i didn't have anything to practice but because i just didn't have anything to do Mm -hmm. um on the saxophone so i was like Mm -hmm. let me put myself in a spot where i'm no longer comfortable and i've got people that are going to push me yeah, man. that was that was a good 70 80 percent why I wanted to go back to grad school Dude, was community ex- exactly what you just said too about putting yourself in a position where you're not comfortable like again to so many walks of life you know that's like if yeah. the most growth happens I find when you are not comfortable like if you have to put <laughs> yourself in those situations where you are not comfortable to be able to grow that's a good thing feeling uncomfortable is a good thing you know? oh yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta put yourself out there to be able to grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember like Robbie in particular, Robbie Smith, our yeah. professor. Oh yeah, he, Rob uh, Smith, man, which he what is a beast. He's a motherfucker. Shout out. Shout he's out. a motherfucker, dude. He is but, a motherfucker. I mean, he will cut you on trumpet, and then he'll turn around and cut you on saxophone. Like, oh yeah, dude. You ever heard him play it. bass, dude? I, damn no! Oh, I'm dude, not. he is a good bass or, player. Or piano, or piano man. Yeah, he can or play drum some set. Pi- yeah, dude. Yeah, he can play some drums. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't know. He's so good. He is. He but is. He would I, like. I think. Go ahead. He go ahead. would like. He would like every day. We'd read three, four charts. Just read and read and read and read. It's like for me too. It's like when I when I got into college, I wasn't a good reader at all. Me neither. And like, because of Robbie, like I can like yep. comfortably say I can sit in at a gig and get the charts for the first time and be able to just read that yep. shit down. Yeah, dude. Cause we would do and, that nonstop. Right. <laughs> I mean, and that alone, like take out your, the practice time you spent on the drums, the fact right. that you can read music like that, mm-hmm. that makes you marketable. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you play wedding bands, if you play any sort of corporate gig, you want to play on a, you want to play on a yacht or not a yacht. What are they? Uh, a cruise, cruise ship. You want to yeah. yeah, play yeah. on a cruise line or a yacht. You're reading new charts or Hey, Hey, if you <laughs> some got rich a, person, yeah, if you got some rich friends, go ahead. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, you play on a cruise ship, you're getting new music once a week. You know, yeah. you play that, you play that week series and then they, they get off and then the next, whatever, the next, whoever comes on and you're the house band. You're going to read new charts. Yeah, man. Um, there was, I forgot, I don't know his name. There was a guy I was following on, on YouTube who was documenting his, his life on a cruise ship and he was a drummer 
and he would he would put the camera up behind him. He's like, I'm reading these charts. Yeah, I, I fucked that up, but uh, like I, I know how to solve that. I've been in enough uncomfortable situations where I'm reading. I have to play the part. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it work. And then all right, new music, new music. It's Is you are marketable so much for that reason. I think I've seen the video. Is that the video where he breaks his snare drum? He's like playing. Uh, there's this one dr- like drummer. Um, was it? It was a drummer, right? It was a drummer, yeah. Yeah, he was like playing, was like, and the camera was right there, and he was playing, and he broke his drum, like he broke his snare drum, like while he oh, was playing man. for his cruise ship, and he's like, "It's like," but he kept <laughs> playing. It's like, it, I, it might have been that. It's been a couple years. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you can't. There's no amount of schooling that you can consume that's going to teach you how to deal with that situation. Right. Yeah. yeah. What do you do when you break a snare drum on stage? Do you raise your hand and say excuse me i can i can we stop the song and and can i get a new snare drum no 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 that's you how you figure it out gig. man that's how you lose that gig and every other gig mm-hmm. after that right? yeah because that that's that's the game exactly so that's why yeah, i feel like every, that's why i feel like every drummer has like ten thousand snare drums on their drum set right. now. <laughs> right i know I, especially now everybody's on stage with at least two set up you oh know, yeah you've got your normal snare and then you got your like you got your fat, your fat boy or your popcorn snare. Dude, yep, Andy, yep. I remember a time when you had you had three. You had yeah. yeah, you had that was your, overkill. That's what I call dude, overkill. I don't know, dude. I really <laughs> like that, man. Because you had you had the regular snare, you had the fat boy, the fat snare, and then you had that little what's it called? Like the a, firecracker. Yeah, the firecracker, man. That's that literally like, what it was called, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. That little like it's like, oh, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> those yeah. heads, those heads were original too. That was back when I couldn't afford anything, so I had like uh, that rings at like eight hundred hertz or like eight thousand hertz, right? Yeah, that's where, that's where like, it starts. Those heads, yeah, the like, heads were like the original heads, so those heads were like ten years old at the time. I got that drum when I was like eleven. <laughs> Dang. Um, Good stuff, though. Almost like a Fisher Price drum. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you know. Fisher Price from Guitar Center. <laughs> right. <laughs> um so I wanted to so Zach uh turned me on to this video and oh, yeah, started dude. I started so watching good. it. I started watching it's of you and uh the the what's the beatbox sax? Oh man, Derek Brown. Derek Brown. Yeah. 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 Dude, so I started watching it. Uh it's the Where the Streets Have No Name and uh Dude, so I good, stopped man. it because I was like, I gotta watch this in real time when Caleb's like here. Yeah, so I'm gonna watch. Oh, you, like, we're, I haven't okay. seen it yet. I, like, yeah, I saw go, the like, first like let, 30 seconds. Yeah, literally before this, him and I were talking. And we're like, well, what stuff do we want to pull up? And I was like, dude, you gotta pull this up. Like, this is so fat, oh, dude. Man. It's so good. So uh, this is the first time I've seen it. Besides right. the first like thirty seconds, so I can't wait. Here we I, go. Hashtag I, I, react video. I already almost started. <laughs> I already almost started crying. So let's see how this goes. Oh man, memories. This was last summer, by the way.
Dude. You're crying. Whoa. Beautiful, stuff. Beautiful stuff. Derek Brown. Derek Brown, Whoa. Caleb Elzinga. Dude. Wow. You can find that. You can find that if you're listening right now. We're gonna put a link down below to actually see that video on Beatbox Sax. You can find him at Beatbox Sax. But man, Caleb, mm-hmm. you and Derek Brown, man, you guys play really, really well together. Like you guys complement each other so well. That was, we think the same thing, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that was unbelievable. Okay, dude. yeah. So Andy, this is your first time seeing it. Hashtag yeah. React video. What you yeah. got? I mean, that was just an. Uh, that's first of all, that's like one of my favorite songs. Like, I love that song. Um, that was just that was gorgeous, man. Like, like the extended techniques that he was doing with like the was he doing like the clicking with his keys it's, and like it's. He, so many things he he wears rings uh, yeah. uh rings on his on his um bottom hand mm-hmm. one on the ring finger i believe and one on the thumb he's clicking uh the his thumb rest he's got a metal thumb rest that he actually mm-hmm. shaved down and mm-hmm. he's clicking at his thumb in time ticka, 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 while he's playing like front hand fingerings dude that's so and, then, and then and that's and that's not that's just the stuff he's hitting then he's doing all this triple tonguing <laughs> double tonguing yeah. slap tonguing tongue ramming all of this stuff he is Dude. incredible and then you so, just like you're just soaring right I, on top i just get to soar here. on top he's, but he's like dude your sound like, was like so oh my god that was so good like what where was, first of all like where did you record that that hall sounds rapids. amazing that's the nomad Gra- gallery in grand rapids yeah on uh uh monroe center yeah monroe center um it was here in town. Yeah. Shout out that to room, Nomad Gallery. Shout out to Nomad Gallery. Uh, Richard. Richard App, I believe, is his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, owns that. But that, I mean, that room, uh, That the reverb in that room was all, like, it was gorgeous. It was, it just, if you, you wanted to play the room. You yeah. wanted to be mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe not a drum set. <laughs> but, like, but like saxophone land oh like, yeah oh mm-hmm. man um that was dude that was beautiful i i actually hung out with Derek yesterday we have a uh, board game night every oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, me, i've been a fan him of him for a wife. long time man his wife long Rachel. time yeah, yeah. I, I saw his stuff on youtube long before i knew that he was like in the grand rapids area I actually well, didn't know that he was like in the general vicinity until you guys started doing stuff. And I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, so he lived, he, he just moved here from um, Chicago. He was living in Chicago for oh five or six years. Um, but him and his, so they just got off uh, a year ago. Now they got off their, uh, the 50, 50 tour where they toured, they took his latest album and they toured at all 50 States. Mm. Oh, cool! Uh, over the course of nine months, and on month two, uh, Derek and Rachel, his wife, got pregnant with their first kid. Oh, so it was whoa. like just just in time. I, I'm sure. I mean, it, yeah, I can say this. Just in time for them to have a kid, they get off the road. They've got one month to move from Chicago to Grand Rapids because he has family that lives in that lives in the area. Mm-hmm. So it's like let's have a kid uh, where the family's close. Uh, where rent's a little cheaper. Well, let's check out Grand Rapids. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was like two, maybe three weeks after he moved here, I ran into him at the jazz jam session at the speakeasy on Sundays. And I, I walk in, I, I did my thing. I just walk in and I'm sitting down by the bandstand listening. And then I look over and him, like Derek Brown is sitting at this table. And yeah, I, same as Zach. You've, I mean, you've been following him for how many years like a I've lot been of years for years <laughs> yeah and so you see him across the way and you're like that is that that you're is like that's right? him that's yeah. Derek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually i went on his instagram real quick and like uh you know just like that's him right, right? yeah yeah. Yep. And yeah and then there was a post that says uh we just moved to grand rapids this is so exciting blah blah, blah. and i was like i'm gonna go talk to him I'm going to go talk to him. I'm, I'm actually going to go talk to, you know, like yeah. set myself up. Let's go. Let's go. And then we hit it off. Great. And we enjoyed, we started shedding together and then we just, he's like, you want to, you want to make some videos? 
like hell yeah yeah <laughs> um so we we have that one that same day we recorded uh um oh man what was the other one what's the other one some is it the somebody that i used to know no it, uh was it Green Day, we did a Green Day cover. Oh, uh, Basket Case, right? Basket Case, thank you. Uh, so we yep. did Basket Case and Where the Streets Have No Name. We recorded those both in the same day. And then we just did a third one where we did uh, Tears for Fears, Shout. Um, nice. And recorded that in his basement. So so that one, is that one out or is that one coming out, the Shout? No, they're, they're, they're all out. Okay. The, they're all out, yep. Dude, in the end of uh, the Basket Case one, when he just like runs away and you're like, <laughs> I, I like cracked up. I was like, Oh my God, these guys are some goons, man. I, to that point, I wish I was a better actor, man. Mm. I wish I, I, cause it'd be so much more funny if I had like said something or, you know, if I could go back and like relive it, you know, I wish I did, did something else, but I was just like, okay. And then Dude, you, you said everything with your playing, man. That's all it is. Good. Good. Yeah, um, man. That arrange, dude. Guys, dude that playing. that arrangement is incredible, dude. Like, thank you. That is a that is beautiful, man. You guys. We, so when we when we first started started hanging out, I would I think it was like once a week. We're just like let's let's put some stuff together. So I'd go over his house once a week, um, and we would just shed. We would just mm-hmm. practice for about two 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 and a half hours and then that we'd eat some food mm-hmm. and it just became it became a thing and that's sort of how we started playing board games and and that's a whole different thing but yeah we just we workshop the tunes We're like what do you want to play well i kind of want to like derek's a big fan of the of like um stadium 80s music mm-hmm. um so it's like hey let's try this let's try this mm-hmm. and yeah then we just like all right well, what if you play this here and i play this here and i'm gonna do this thing with my tongue and I'm going to scrape this thing while you do this. And I'm like, sure, dude, you're good. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do whatever you want. Um, and I, to, to speak to towards like high level musicianship, Derek Brown is, is incredible. Like sit, like when we're, when we were practicing those tunes, sitting on the other side of his horn, listening, like, cause I, you know, I'm like you, Andy, you said, I just kind of like soar over top. So that was sort of what I was doing in the, in the basement too. But man, like when I could sit and listen to what he was doing, it continues to blow my mind. Mm-hmm. It continues mm-hmm. to blow my mind. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he's, he's a perfectionist and he, he knows it cold. He knows it cold. He's, in, mm-hmm. he's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't know Derek Brown, go check out Derek Brown for any who, mm-hmm. any and all who listen. Check him who out. Listens. It's, it's beatbox sax on, uh, on YouTube. Go check him out. Yep. Yep. Well, that's beatbox another, sax. like. That brings up another point, though. It's like when you go, first of all, it's like a musician, like going and checking out, like going to all the venues and like just hanging and checking out all the, all yeah. the acts and like seeing yeah. the groups that come in. Like, and just talking to people. Like, uh, there's a, I feel like there's a lot of people. And I was like that in particular, that was me for a long time. It's like I'm a, I'd be afraid to like go up and like talk, especially if you're playing, you, you see like one of your favorite groups and they're playing a place like Cliff Bells, you know? Like going up and like talking. It's intimate enough. It's right. intimate no, enough to no. where you could like go up and like that's what I'm alluding to, man. It's like yeah. going up and like talking to them. After, like they're they're pretty like I have yet to like go like be like poo pooed by somebody. Right. Obviously, 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 if you're if they're playing like stadiums, you're not gonna have access. But when you go and like play, check out some of these like musicians that like dude killing it at like these smaller venues it's like just yep. going and talking and like picking their brain so i've got two stories about this man yeah. okay so so watching mm-hmm. uh ghost note at cliff bells is the first yeah. time i got to watch ghost note and i was just like i was there with my girlfriend and i was with uh one of my friends dylan who andy knows really well um, i was i was also there at that <laughs> specific concert were you i don't think you were when You've I seen that there before. Was, anyway, okay. anyway, I mean, afterwards, I was like, dude, I got to try. Because, like, uh, in Paddle Blast, you know, I try and do the aux percussion roll, which is, like, I studied trumpet. Like, the auxiliary percussion thing is, like, not not necessarily <laughs> my realm. And so I'm just, like, trying to learn. And so I stayed afterwards, and Nate Worth is, like, the aux percussion dude and snarky puppy. So I was like, man, yep. if I can talk to him and pick his brain. And so 
I waited and he came out and I started talking to him. We started chatting and he actually let me go behind his set and like take a picture and see exactly what he had set up and everything. It was like, it was crazy. And these guys are just so nice. They're willing to talk to you, willing to, to like let, let you in on all the stuff that they're doing. And then another time, Victor Wooten, who's, if if anybody listening doesn't know who Victor Wooten is, Go listen to Victor. Up. Read his book too. It's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. So I I saw him. I was at a trumpet competition when I was in college. It was in uh, it was in Denver, Colorado. And some of the guys I was playing with, they like hit me up and they're like, "Yo, dude, Victor's playing in Boulder tonight. You want to go?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, dude, let's go." So so we rented a car and drove over to Boulder. It's only like forty five minutes. We stayed and we watched uh, we watched Victor, which was an insane experience in and of itself. But then Mm -hmm. afterwards, like everybody went off stage and I was like, guys, I know you guys might want to get back to the hotel, but we're staying. I'm sorry. We're staying. And And he came out and like talked with me for a little while. I got picture with him and everything. It was like, man, this is, it's insane. All these guys, they're so much nicer than you think their star status has them at, you know? Right. They're human. Yeah. Yeah, They're they're human. human. They're human. And and this this might be a controversial controversial point, but the musicians who are really great musicians are usually the people that don't have issues talking with people. Right. Mm-hmm. If I can if I can say like if I can speak to like stardom, you know you you meet I don't want to say any names. You meet somebody that's like yeah you know I I am the shit. Then mm-hmm. yeah you're gonna be treated like shit. You know mm-hmm. yeah. And and that's controversial. Maybe that's totally off 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 tilt. Well, I feel no, like anybody a- that's really spent the time alone to learn their instrument and to learn music understands the humanity aspect versus mm-hmm. like a huge claim to fame and I'm I'm popular because I'm pretty or again this is all right. horrible things but it, it's it's also some it's some form of reality. But know? also yeah. those great musicians did the same thing themselves. They yeah. went up to somebody and they talked to that person. So they, you know, now it's like the roles are switched a little bit. So they, it's yeah. like now they have to carry on that responsibility and like, yeah, you know. Yeah. And you know, I think there's, there's one important thing to remember that's in that vein is that like when you're going up and talking to somebody, like you have to realize that they probably do get that a lot. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if, if they do just like ghost you, like you got to remember that they are human, mm-hmm. you know, and that, sometimes they might not always stop and talk to you mm-hmm. and and that's okay. But like, right. That's, that's one thing I, I see a lot of people going and shitting on, you know, different artists because they were mean to them at a restaurant or something like that. And it's like, you know, dude, these people are human. You got to right. know the right time and place to try exactly. and pick these people up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I guess, I guess to that point, and I, I haven't done this, but anybody that's been on tour, if you're on tour for six months out of the year, like, all you know is where you're going to play, where your next meal is coming from, and that you're sleeping on a bus for eight hours. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that cycle becomes its own existence for you. Mm-hmm. And if, you know, if you just haven't slept in three days because blah, 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 then it's going to be that much harder. But for you and me who woke up in our bed pre- the previous night, right. yeah, yeah. drove 40, you know, the for the wound thing, drove 45 minutes. Not, not bad. It was just 40 you know, it yeah, wasn't exactly. three, three different states. Right. You're in a yeah. totally different world, like yeah. a physical world than, than they're existing in too. So right. just empathy Pers- on both sides, you know, where they're going to have empathy on the fact that we're younger and we're just trying to learn and we really appreciate their music, you know, but then we have to in turn give them that same benefit of the doubt. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man. Um, Has so- the battle bots- done tours like that have you guys been on the road like that no i mean we were planning on doing one this summer like we were working on we had a i mean there was a lot of stuff the covid the covid oh man so we like had to fax everything man but that's gonna be all delayed till probably 21 um blessing in disguise though you know yeah that's what i'm trying and, and i mean it's hard it's hard to say you know there's obviously this covid thing is not a blessing by any means but it's like I I'm somebody who like when adversity happens, I always try and look at what's the positive thing in that, mm-hmm. you know, and that's one thing. Um, Andy, I know you can probably speak to this as well. Caleb, I don't know if you march drum corps at all, but 
I, I marched drum corps for a lot of years, Andy marched drum corps for a lot of years. And like, that's one thing going through that, that that's, that's like the biggest lesson that I got. It's like when things happen, it's like, you can't control what you can't control and mm-hmm. you have to find a way to come out of it. Cause eventually you're going to come out of it no matter what. Right. But, yep. but the discrepancy is in the speed, right? If you dwell on the fact that this crappy thing happened, then it's going to take you way longer to come out of it than if you're like, okay, this happened. How do we move forward? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for, for things to come with on the paddle bots front. Well, and also wow. like just being able to, you know, have time, extra time just to, to hone in your craft a little bit more. Like I yep. know for me, that's been super refreshing. Caleb, I know like, and, and like all of us, all of us, yeah. it's like we've had that extra time just to kind of, okay. Like we, ha- I, you know, used to work eight hours. Now I don't. So I'm just going <laughs> to play free. <Yeah. laughs> even, even to the point of, of beneath the beat, right. You mm-hmm. guys wouldn't have had the thought or time to mm-hmm. create this podcast where yeah. you get to talk about music with musicians. Yeah. If, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if paddle bots was going on tour, if you were still right. eight hours a week, you know? right. so this, mm-hmm. this alone is, is that silver linings act that you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exploring the things that you, you know, you didn't have time before and uh, it's, it's opened up a lot of cool, unique, cool, unique ideas and, and uh, yeah. Unique avenues. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, so before we, uh, before we wrap up here, I got to play this one. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what it is yet. Uh, I got to play this one. We just, we got to play it. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's, that. it's on. <laughs> yep. Dude. Okay. Andy, before you play, hold on. Yeah, Caleb, was- I don't know if you know though, this is literally the highest viewed video on the entire paddle boss Instagram. I, how, can you tell me? I don't know. I, cause my phone doesn't show the numbers. I don't yeah, know why this, I think this one has like over, it's like, I think it has 2300 or something like that views. Oh, on. nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I'll look, this- I'll look it up. I love this. Yeah. This. Dude, so do I. So let's talk. Let, let's talk before here. Let me. Okay. I'm going to re go. I'm going to go back to this. So let's talk about the process first. The process. Yeah. The process. So Caleb, how did you come about? This okay. Thing? Haruki hit me up saying, yeah. Hey, I'm sure you're well aware of the tasty bots Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Did I say that right? Tasty Tuesdays, whatever. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Tasty Tuesdays. Um, <laughs> tasty Tuesdays. <laughs> Double T's. <Tease. laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you're well aware that we've been doing this. And he was just saying, like, it, it is a lot of work to, to put that out and everything. And, and to that point, we want to start expanding and uh, get some more people doing it. I think Dutcher's done with one with you guys. I don't yeah. know if it's done yet or mm-hmm. something like that. And, I mean, when, when, you, when he hit me up, I was like, Dude, yes, yes. <laughs> you have no idea. Um, and so I actually didn't do anything about it for like a month, right? Yeah. Uh, which, because I don't, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> um, so and it, it happened. I was just in my room with my saxophone. I was like, let me, let me try something for Haruki. Like, oh, where'd you guys? Oh. We're here. We can see. We're you. Here. here. We can see you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, sorry that freaked me out. Where are you guys? <laughs> we're we're here. oh, you probably went on to speaker view. There should be a button uh, in the top right. I don't see anything. Oh. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all! Oh, by, okay. Here by we go. the way, wow. Caleb, wow. two thousand nine hundred eighty-seven is the number of views on that video right now. Okay, that's that's awesome. You, yeah, you guys, that's awesome. No, thank you for um, that, man. Yeah, <laughs> dude, for real. What the? Well, okay, fine. I want to. <laughs> uh, I want to see because I I know I reshared it. I want to mm-hmm. see what our total, our total would be. Yeah, I mean, I reshared it too. I had like ah uh, shoot, ah uh, shoot. So I that plus eight hundred. I got eight hundred through my channel. Um, three thousand seven hundred eighty-seven. That's that's awesome. Keep doing um, the math, okay. Zach. Okay, yeah. Mr. Marketer. <laughs> um, any, <laughs> anyway, the uh, the let me actually, like, yeah. So I was sitting at my at my computer. I had Logic open. 
I was just like, I don't know what I want to do. Let me set a metronome and just go. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will, I will say this, and this is the reason why I think it worked out the way that it did was I knew how you guys operated Mm -hmm. and, and, and at least putting it together is, um, you do this part, you do this part and then you Mm -hmm. put it together and it Mm -hmm. all sort of fits. So I, I actually tried to write with you guys in mind. I didn't know who or how many of you were going to be in it, but I was like, what would I, what can I play that would inform the band? What I think should happen here right so yeah, that yeah. that was that was the intro yeah exactly exactly mm-hmm. so i was thinking i was thinking about all of those pieces um and then keep like creating the structure so it was like a four bar intro or an eight bar intro and then double double the phrase and then something had to happen there boom whip and then that's why i wanted that's the intro had to be with hits and the the melody had to be funky I didn't think you guys would do the halftime. I will yeah. Say that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like the way out. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, because I was I was playing as much as I was thinking about what you guys would play. So right. I thought for sure yeah. you guys would do the double time there. You know, something something hipper than what I just sang. But um, <laughs> you guys, you guys went into the halftime thing, and then I did the lick. I had been at the time I had been working with triad pairs, and so that is that's just major. I think it was E major, and then I went up to uh, E f- or like F major or something like that. E- whatever. That was a concept that I had been working on. So I was like, well, what if I what if I do that? That would be that'd be kind of cool. And it's something repetitive, which would help you guys catch it. Right. So that's and that's why I played it twice. I love I love the fact that Haruki played it with me on the second yeah, time. Yeah. Did a little little did a little did a little did a little did and then he joins did a little did a little did a little God that guy loves fucking flexing, dude. <laughs> if you got it you got it right yeah dude and, then, and he has got it <laughs> and then so the ending okay so insider scoop i i i had more or less written it and then recorded it 30 times mm-hmm. to get mm-hmm. like the dude, one full you know circle I mean? man full circle full, <laughs> full circle i and i and i it sort of happened like i wrote the intro and i was like that's cool okay um sweet now what bit a little day a little day a little day okay do that again so right. the, the hook up the catch and then at the end it was just like like go for it what can i do like altissimo all that stuff um andy your drum fill <laughs> during that section floors me every single time every single time um, and then the ending goes into the like that triplet like oh, no, 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 no. yeah wow. dude and, yeah. Like, I don't know how I did that I will say that <laughs> <laughs> when when that was all said and done I don't know how that mapped out right so mm-hmm. the fact that you guys like figured it out for me thank you because you just saved me um, <laughs> uh, so yeah Haruki so I sent it to you guys I was like that's cool um it's like 40 seconds that's short enough for uh um instagram great Mm -hmm. and then you guys sent that to me december 31st really man that's been a minute it had to be or no not the 31st because that would be new year's Mm mm-hmm you guys might have yeah. sent it to me on the first. Yeah, yeah. January well, it 1st. was it was posted on January seventh, so that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So you guys, I played I played a New Year's show up in somewhere up north. Mm-hmm. Came back home that afternoon, and that's when I got the message from from you guys. I opened that thing, and first of all, I was already really excited because I knew what I what I sent you right. was something that I had like worked hard on. Mm-hmm. 
And then when I got it back, I listened to that nonstop for a good hour. <laughs> I, it's, and I, I'll say this again. It's 40 seconds long. Yeah. I listened to it over and over for about an hour. <laughs> um, Here we go. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. When I first heard that ending, I was like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I don't know what I'm gonna play." Here, I'll listen to it again. <laughs> So I listened to, dude, I must have listened to that like, like, a f I must have listened to that like 50 times before I played any sort of drums, on, like whatsoever. Dang. It's just like, just trying, like Caleb, exactly what you were saying, man. Just like listening and like getting a vibe for it. That yep. way it's like when I sit down to the drums, I'm not just like pulling my hair out. I already know what I'm hearing. I just have to play it at that point. Yeah. Uh, Except for the ending, I had no fucking idea what I was going to do. <laughs> Dude, I, I can tell you right now, I would not be able to uh, uh, replicate that. I think I, I think I got lucky. Yeah. For everybody out there, I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that ending, too, I was just matching. Dude, I honestly was just matching note for note. And then Haruki, like, pointed out some a couple of things because his mind is like, yep. yep. Dude, it's on that's a different why, level. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then, this is the end. This is the final product. Oh man, I am. I love this. Me too, dude. Me too. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't part of that video. Whoa! <laughs> um, so yeah, like huh. there was that ba da 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 that right there. Herky's like, let's just turn that into a groove for a little bit. I was like, do you do? Oh yeah, the ending there. Yep. Yeah, dude. I man. Dude, you all all you guys. Can we do it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play it again. Yeah, let's play it again. I just want to hear it again. Yeah. Um, we listened to me do it twice. We can listen to everybody <laughs> do it twice. Absolutely. Zach included. Oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> So, so I have I have one thing, Andy. Are you wearing the same sweater? No, I'm not. Oh, I was I like, just, I was like I, I, are you sure? No, I am positive that that sweater is in the laundry right now. But I do <laughs> like that style of sweater with the hood. Yeah, and the short like sleeves that a lot, and the short like sleeves. The, yeah, the gotta, gotta show yeah. the gun yeah. show, right? 
The, mm-hmm. Yeah, the gun show that I don't have. Oh, so, dude, come yeah. on. You're ripped. You're hot. You know it. Oh, so. Well, he's, oh, he so. can be hot, but he doesn't have to be ripped. You're right. <laughs> you are right. Thank otherwise, you. Otherwise, I've got no shot. So. <laughs> no, dude. Uh, Thank you for that. Bringing us back to reality right there. Back to reality. Back to well, reality. Well, cool, man. Th- Caleb, dude. Thank you so much for being a part of this, man. For real, thank um, you, man. Dude, it was so much fun hanging out with you guys. Yeah, man. Like, Likewise, I, man. I think last time I saw you guys was uh, Frederick Meyer. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Time, the time, the time before that, I was playing with Desmond Jones, and we opened for you guys at Bell's, like three or four oh, years yeah. ago. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Those those are the last two times I saw you guys. So like the fact that we can hang out and chat right now. Yeah, man. Like that's awesome. That's dude, awesome. For real. For real, man. And, and not just thank chat, you for all you do. Chat for two and a half hours, dude. Yeah. Hey, like, just goes yeah, by I, so I blocked quick, out the man. time for you guys. <laughs> thank you, man. And and yeah, for real, I'll thank you for all you do for the music community, putting your stuff out there. Thank you yeah. for this chat. You know, man. You're you're an awesome dude. Is there uh, is there anything else you want to plug before we uh, get done here? Uh, yes. Well, one one we talked about the Nate Walton album. Mm-hmm. Um, Serena Ray is a vocalist out of Grand Rapids. She okay. is coming out with her EP, um, I believe, next month. And me, Terrence Macy, uh, from he's a trumpet player, and Aaron Hedinga play trombone. Aaron Hedigan wrote the horn arrangements for three of the songs. And then it was me, Aaron, and Terrence recorded um, horns for her EP. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Her EP is going to, it's, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's real. And she's an amazing singer. So that's coming out, I think, in like, in like a month. I think she just announced the release. So be on the lookout for that as well. Serena Ray. Sweet, man. Um, I'm Can sure people find her on platform, Facebook, Instagram, every platform? Facebook, Instagram. Yep. She's all, she's on everything. She's Sweet. not on TikTok, which we didn't talk about TikTok, but that's fine. We'll save it for next time you come on. It'll probably be deleted <laughs> by. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whatever, it really might be though. It really might whatever be. Whatever the thing is, yeah. Anyway, I think I think so. Um, well, okay, we're not live. I might. I think I'm going to be the saxophone player for Joe Hurtler and the Rainbow Seekers. Yeah. Um, officially, I played my first gig with them on Tuesday, and that was after two weeks of rehearsals or we two two rehearsals, um, but everything went well. I like playing with them. I think they like having me. But mm-hmm. Aaron, um, Aaron is not looking to play or be on tour with them. Not okay. like because he just he just uh, it proposed to his partner. Oh, cool. um, so he's stepping into like dad realm. Mm, um, that's cool. He's so, an awesome sculptor too. Yeah, his stuff he's, is awesome. Yeah, he's a pretty killer sculptor. Uh, Socks of milk. I believe is his Instagram handle where he posts all of that stuff. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. He's, he's really cool. Um, but that's, I guess that's the biggest news is I might, I may be on tour with Joe Hurtler for, for a while. And they're, a, they're sick, a big, dude. they're a big deal in yeah, Michigan. Man. And, and whatnot, they're, so. they're a big deal around. I actually went to, uh, they were opening for, I was really bummed because uh, Grizz played Red Rocks mm. two nights in a row and yeah. I ended up getting tickets to the the table show, so it wasn't the live band show. So I actually saw mm-hmm. Grizz, but it was the day after they played Red Rocks. Oh so, dang! Okay. Yeah, they're but they're doing a lot of stuff. I mean, they played fucking Red Rocks, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, right. Um, they cool, just man. got um, summer camp. Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Scamp. They're on. They're on that for 2021. Nice. Uh, so that'll be fun. Like Twiddles on it. A tur- uh, Turk or T A U C A U K. Oh, talk, talk. Yeah, yeah. talk is awesome. I saw them at the shelter in Detroit. Good man. stuff. I was man. front row, man. I got a drumstick actually. <laughs> <laughs> they are so tight. Yeah, dude, they're awesome. If if and I believe if everything goes right, I'll be there with them again. As long as like what I think is going to happen is going to happen, uh, and you can tick all this off. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but for sure. For sure. Uh, but this won't be coming out for a little while too. So who knows? Maybe at that point oh, you'll be, you'll be and in. Well, so. And then yeah. well, let's, let's hope for that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Wow. But I think that's, that's it. That's what's, that's what's going on in my world. Sweet, awesome, man. man. Well, Caleb Belzinga, 
Check him out on social media, all the social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Check out his TikTok. TikTok. Um, yeah, my TikTok is under Mystery Sacks. Mystery, Mystery Sacks. Sacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. And I'll be sure to link everything below too. Okay, sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to talk about TikTok. It's <laughs> it's its own thing. It is <laughs> its own thing. Find me, on, find me on Instagram. That's where it's important. Yeah, that's where I'm, yeah. that's where I'm like actually putting out good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I okay. Look, look look at this. I have one of these guys. I've got the the. Ewe. 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 Yeah, yeah, dude. I saw I, that video. I saw you've got one on your website too with the Ewe. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. It's like a really short. It's like thirty seconds long or something like that. But it's fucking wow. sweet. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that was on my website. Oh uh, man, I yeah, I have to find that. I yeah. have a website. Wait, what? Dude, uh, by the way, though, your website is like fucking hot as shit, dude. It uh, looks yes. really good. It looks I really good. I worked really hard on that sucker. Did you build it yourself? It's a square space, square space site, square space, but I, yeah. I did, I did all the dude, design. It looks really, really nice. Like I was going through it, dude. I look at like for my business, I look at so many business owners' websites. So many of them are fucking trash, dude. Yeah, man. Such it's, garbage. The, the, the biggest telltale for me on the, on sets like that is the, the, the bullet bulleted list like yeah you know, yep. so much text right from the yep. beginning i'm like no are you lost me at help yeah i mean i'm not i'm not yeah. staying see mm-hmm. ya yeah you know? yeah mm-hmm. give yep. me a picture yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. cool man well so, dude- anyway yeah well iwi um i did i did a i put an iwi a six second iwi video of me going from my lowest note to my highest note in one gliss it's it takes zero effort there's no skill in it 500,000 views on this video. What? What? TikTok. I'm not kidding. And that's, so I had, I had 130 followers on TikTok. I posted that video and it, I think it went hundred K in the first four days. And it put me at like 800. I have, I have 2,700 followers on TikTok because one video went 500 K. And I have another <laughs> Ewe video that right after that is at 300 K. I don't know what it is. <laughs> That's they are, so crazy. Dude, dude, okay, and here's here is the 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 mystery of, of social media. I wish that happened on Instagram because right, that's where yeah. it don't that's the only place that matters. Mm-hmm. But it it doesn't happen that way on Instagram. Instagram is so hard to get any native or uh, organic reach. Yeah. TikTok was I didn't I didn't I can't plan it. I didn't plan it. But it's something like that it goes and you have no control over it. Mm-hmm. So because of one, one stupid six second video, I'm at the same level of follow- followers on TikTok as I am Instagram in two months. Yeah. It, it, wow, it's, dude. it's really cool. Like it's really cool, but I'm also like pissed <laughs> <I'm> also <laughs> <laughs> because all of the work. And I mean, we talked about it up, like earlier, like I put in a lot of work on my Instagram, specifically yeah. Instagram mm-hmm. yeah. and to see me just do bullshit mm-hmm. on tiktok and just get the same result i'm like you're like damn it <laughs> fuck so why why am i trying on on instagram I don't, yeah you know i don't know i don't want to talk about it obviously i'm <laughs> hurting i'm in pain hurting. And, half a million you know. half a million views i'm hurting <laughs> first first world problem <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool, man. Thank you so much again. Yes, for let me get out. out of your hair. So. No, no, dude. dude this otherwise, is otherwise, I mean, we went two and a half hours. I'm sure we could go till midnight. Oh, we, we could definitely go. could. We could go. Whole, <laughs> we could go a whole weekend. Well, part, part two, like three years later, we'll do that. Oh, dude, we'll we'll definitely have a part two, and it probably won't be three years away. <laughs> right, well, sweet. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool, man. Caleb, cool, it's great you, having Andy. you, dude. Great hanging. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for for coming on, for sharing your knowledge with us and our future audience. You know, it's it's been a great thing. And that concludes our conversation with Caleb Elzinga. If you like what you heard, you can follow us on all social media platforms or subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Thank you so much for listening and we will see you next time.